The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Good to be back off for a break. And, uh, yep, I had a break, but, of course, I was watching the market all the time. Very choppy action. You know, the more I looked at these really important the key stocks like the investors business daily stocks and many others i went through um, overseas markets i just took my time to go through and say let's just be absolutely unbiased let's look at the markets i'm a mega bull in the sense that i believe that this is a um this is not just a it's a secular move that we've seen after when you're 11 years in a bull market yes of course you can always say you're getting extended and absolutely we're getting extended but even more importantly what is happening and I, I i like this aspect is that within the context of where to put your money there are certain there are certain parameters that are being met. I'm going to just give you an example. We had this for a moment, uh, UTX, United Technologies, uh, uh, out of it. Um, it actually had a nice run. Um, it has gone from the low of 122 to Friday's high of 131.20. Uh, I think it actually might have gone a little higher. Let me just double check. Uh, no. 131.20, trading now down three points, so more than three points from that high. It's down 2.16 to 128.08. When I look at these charts, these are, I mean, United Technologies, Triple M, these are core to American bull markets historically, decades and decades. And, uh, in DuPont's world, it's changed now. It's, yeah, is it still back to DuPont? Can we put DD? Yeah, DuPont trading at um, 67, down 0.93. DuPont, the, the Nimoy's um, chemicals, etc. Dow, Dow DuPont is now one company. Uh, goes all the way to the uh, 110 area, 109 area, all time high back in 2018. Uh, maybe it was January of this year of 19. No, 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 it was an 18. And then what happens is it plummets down to the 200 period moving average in the monthly chart into the 64, 63 area, trading right now at 67, just off those lows. But these are key companies. We're, we're in for a really sad state of affairs if this is a top of significance rather than what I'm thinking is a July uh, or uh, July, in most cases, July top, certainly in the Dow's case, and this this continue, continuation of the sideways to down move needs to continue to digest those big gains that we made rather than to look at this and say, uh-oh, it's all over. No, I think DuPont, I think uh, um, a stock like a Caterpillar, CAT, trading down three at 115, all-time highs 173 back in January of 2018, almost at its, uh, his, uh, at least, two-year lows. And I'm looking at this and saying, at some point, they will have to get on back, back on track, or else this market is going to have a much longer time out. So I had a question say, hey, for, for a subscriber, uh, what was the question? It was more a statement. Um, are you net neutral? No, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, this is a very important moment, because all the charts that I looked at very few were really bullish. The ones that were making all-time highs, fewer and fewer, but they really were good. But the majority said, we're tired. We just need a break. Or they said, hey, we've been digesting for quite a while. We're just trying to find some kind of footing in this quicksand. So as I'm looking at this, let me now go back to the down. I'll do this as quickly as I can, because I want to get this first section uh, analysis, overall analysis done very quickly. Um, the Dow's down 344. It sounds like a lot, but it's just been in this thousand point. It's, look, we're only a thousand points off the uh, most recent low, 25,339. Uh, actually, less than that. We're 800 points off the low. It's not a big deal. 
And I've been saying, and we've been short. We, we, the last little short that we had left on Friday was taken out. We backed to short again. I am looking at this as a digestive phase. So to answer the question, we do have long stocks, and um, but I'm tightening up the stops. I'm not. I'm not hanging around. In other words, if we've been stopped out of a stock that looked like it was good, we had a dividend stock. It's actually back, looking quite nice again. Um, but I'm not playing any games. I'm prepared to take a one or a two percent loss. I don't want to sit with a seven or a nine or a twelve percent loss. Just sitting there. If the market starts another big move to the downside rather than to the upside, and everything about what I did over the last week, and especially over the weekend, suggests that there's more time that's needed. It doesn't have to be price. I'll be surprised if it isn't price in the sense that the down needs to test. The low 25,000s again. I I might be wrong about that, but that's just what I'm thinking. We've already gone once today under 25,000, slightly higher than that right now. Uh, under 26,000 into 25,900s. We're above that at 25, 26,055. So let's just do this one at a time. The monthly chart suggests. Based on the MACD is still very weak and the stochastic is still good at 84%, that there's a mixed market. And within that context, the 200 period moving average is way down in, in other than the daily, which is at 25,873. It's way down in the weekly, way, way, way down in the monthly. So let's look at the 14, the nine and the 14 period moving averages. The, the nine period moving average is right there in the monthly chart, and that's at 20. If I can hit it, 25,931. And the black moving average, the 14 period right now, is at 25,650. Will we hit that in uh, September? I suspect yes. I think we're going to hit uh, the low 25,000s. Okay. All right. That's the, that's the monthly chart. The positives suggest that we've been above the, the green line, the nine period moving average. For so long, even right now, we're above it. We've only been below it in that big ugly candle of July, of May. And then, of course, there was that terrible candle of December. Other than that, from the breakout of March of 2016, where the monthly chart went above the green nine period expansion moving average and then started closing above it, we've tested a couple of times that basically. We've tested the 14 period moving average about twice uh, up until that was uh, October, broke it in October, above it again, tested it in May, and we haven't been back to this 14, this black 14 period moving average. The green one, yes, we've tested it many times and closed above it. That's why this is a very important moment. Let's go to the S&P. SPX.X, there we go. SP is right now trading down 22, and the nine period moving average is at 2869, uh, and the 14 period moving average supporting the monthly is 2828. I think we will test the green one. I don't know if we'll test the black one, but I think we will test the green one in September, and that is 28, uh, let's call it 2860 for now. All right, let's get the QQQ. One, two, three, QQQ. Way about even the nine period exponential moving average, and this is only a peak B. I believe this is a peak B in the monthly of the QQQ series. That's a big positive. I'll be back in a moment. The Dow's down three, uh, 35, S&P's down 22. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll do a little more analysis and then we'll start taking calls. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So we're back and we're looking at the E mini uh, down 20 at 2904. You can see in the two minute chart, made a peak C1, C2 after that low that was, well, it was first a peak D, then it pulled back to the 2890 area. Uh, then it ran up to a peak C1, C2 in the Chapman Wave methodology, that slightly lower low on the right side with the technicals fading, indicated that it was a peak C2 and not a D. And then it pulls back, starts another move around about 28, uh, was that 96? So, yeah, 2896 runs up to another peak D, and then it's kind of stuck in the two minute chart, peak F in the 10 minute chart, huge move down at 10 o'clock. It was bad news once again, and uh, a sharp pull back to the 2890 area, uh, and then it runs up and stores in the 200, that pink 200 period exponential moving average, around about 2909, and now it's just kind of trying to decide which way to go. Okay, now a couple of things that I wanted to talk about here. So the QQQ has got the same pattern here. Just as think of all of these as rectangles right here. There's just a rectangle formation stuck in this formation. Can say a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And that's all you're looking at. And the weekly chart is a peak D. That monthly chart is still very good. However, the MACD is not cross positive, and the stochastic is very good at 85%. So that's a divergence. That's saying there's some internal strength, but the core of that, that MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, starting to really rebound and go positive, that's what's needed for the next big move to start, the move into the 195, 200 area. I think that has to wait. I think a lot has to happen before they can, can really be triggered. And that might be, I'm going to say this now because I'm, I better say it now because I'm liable to forget. I've already forgotten to say it for a couple of weeks. Um, I think that the next big move to the upside will start to come on the third announcement, not the first, but the, the move that holds, is on the third announcement that a major, I don't mean just a, a, a local company, I mean a major company, United States American company, says we are now going to start building factories in America. We're bringing our, all the, the development and everything is, is here. We've sent everything out because it's been cheaper overseas. Now we're going to start to manufacture here. 
When that happens, the first one will be a little bit of a pop, then the market will have to digest and say, well, that's one. You got thousands of companies. You need three or more. And once that third and fourth and fifth announcement comes in, that is going to be the big change. And I'm, I'm starting to develop a plan. Um, can I call it a plan? It's more a plan that I want to use. So it's the concepts of what the next phase of my CODA phase is going to look like and why it has to be there. Because if it doesn't come about, yes, then we are looking at some serious deterioration in the United States stock market. But I think that's going to be for much later. I think there's still another big bullish phase. But in the meantime, this is a big digestive phase. We just need it. And it's going to be time and maybe some price. All right. So I just wanted to go back to gold to show you something interesting. Look, whoops. What did I just hit? See, that's corn. Corn, we're down. We're, we're, we've been for a long time. We're out of that commodity sector. Uh, it did very nicely for us. Now we're out. But gold is GC, not C. At GC, the continuous contract up 25 at 1554. From, I drew this rectangle, and what it says about the rectangle is you can pop out of it, but there's a good chance you're going to come back in to do some testing. If you break the low of this kind of consolidation after spiking above it, that says now you're going to repeat the same process but to the downside by closing, in this case, below 1488 for a period of, of days over a period of weeks because we're looking at the daily chart. We're not even there. We haven't gone back into the 15, uh, 1515 area, which is kind of in the middle of this range. So, so far, gold is acting very well. Look at silver. Silver is up. 85 cents. This is a, a, 12, a $19.20 stock up 85 cents, up 4.68%. That's a breakout. Once it broke that 200 period moving average in the weekly of 17.53, look how well it's done. It's pushed away. That means this is all now big support between 1770 and 1735. This is now a support area, even if it comes back as a magnet, and that's going to be very important. Uh, let me just see what I'm doing over here. Something popped up. Okay. Now, this is going to be interesting because look, the, the, the weekly chart broke out in leg E. Let me show you the bigger picture of silver. Very nice. Uh, what we're looking at here is this is the level that we've gotten to. This is the level we've gotten to the high of the week of the 8th of September of 2017 of 19.27. So for the high today is 19.28, but it's really targeting the high of 19.86 made in April, the week of April the 21st of 2017. So this is going to be very important, but it is E. But look at this. Look at the MACD soaring to higher. And look at the stochastic at 92% in a weekly chart. That, yeah, this is an incredible improvement in the weekly chart. And look at the monthly chart broken above the 200-period um, moving average, this orange line right here at 18.8064. Um, in the monthly chart. That is very good. Just want to show you something else here. You see this pattern? <clears throat> in gold, right there, and this is, this is, I'm talking about it even though I missed it as a technician. It was all there. My focus has been on the dollar. We've been long the dollar since April of last year. It's done very nicely. Nothing like any of the gold stocks or gold itself. I just said that was my focus. And I, I just, we, we were about to take a, a position in the IAU, that's gold, uh, the, the, the very small contract, way down at about the 1440 level. So I just, I missed it. And it just kept going up and up and up. So. There is a digestive period coming, but at this point, it is a currency of fear. And as a currency of fear, it is saying that you've got it. I will say it again. Gold and silver, but gold in particular, is what huge institutions, countries, um, this is the big stuff. This is where money flows when there's uncertainty. And uncertainty here means that it includes the XLF, which is holding OK at uh, 26.53, down 39 cents, had a high of 30.33, the, the S&P Select Financial uh, Spider Fund. 
um, way back in January of 2018, slumps to 22. That's eight points. That's a huge move. Uh, eight points in December uh, was a low. And then it rallies very sharply to 28.72. Now it's back at 26.53. It is really struggling. So when we look at this, you have to say, Part of this whole thing with it, it's already European financials, the banks, who are most are at their lows. It's just it's a real tough scenario there. I mean, they're even going to start charging for stuff they never charged for before just to earn some money. So this is a serious thing. But what it has to do with is it has to do with um, there is there has to be a way for countries to to look elsewhere. If they are beginning beginning to get nervous about their own situation, and usually they look at gold, and which they've done, or they look at the currencies. Well, EUR USD is trading at uh, uh, lows, multi-year lows, goes all back to 2017 at 1.09. The uh, USD USD JPY, that's the the, the yen is trading um, at multi-year lows. This is a serious thing. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And just as I'm about to finish up with those, uh, with those areas, I'm talking about the three different areas. Gold is one. Gold is a currency of fear. The currency of respect is the dollar at this point. It might not last, but I think and I've been calling the, the dollar basically the Harley Davidson of American uh, uh, companies, um, not 
as it stands right now, because hog is trading at lows that we haven't seen in decades, and at the point down at 31. I'm talking about the icon of America. You know, I'm talking about internationally. When talking about icons, you talk about Harley is the American automobile, uh, the American motorcycle company. That's really it. So the dollar is really, it's got the international respect because. Where do you put your currency? You put your currency in the strongest currency and so forth. That's the dollar. It's holding, holding, holding very well. And then when you're looking at uh, rates, America is going to be forced to be looking at lower rates only because there is such an international competition to um, float bonds to get money. And those bonds, are, are, they have yields that are, are negative. Many of them are negative yields. And that's going to be forcing America to make some kind of decision. So is the decision going to be somehow or other to, to, to get the dollar weaker? That's one of the ways, but it's not so easy. You know, it's just you, you can't just do it on a dime. Little joke there. Um, but at the same time, the TLT is acting, look at this, it's holding right there. That means yields are lower and lower and lower, 147.94, up 60 cents on the TLT. Hey, wait a minute, look at uh, crude oil. Crude oil got slammed. Look at this, 53.53, uh, holding very well. I've been saying I think it's in a trading band, uh, discussing shorting it. Uh, uh, I had a question the other day, and I said, you know, about uh, 10 days ago, I said, I don't think so. Yeah, you could do it as a quick trade. But I, until one of the levels of support gets broken, and today did break, is holding above that right now at 53.51 down a dollar 60. Um, I just think that crude oil is kind of stuck in a range, and you can see it is now a slightly different range. I'm going to change this, I'm making it a little bit wider, and I'll put it down to there, so you can see crude oil is in a range now between 56 and 52. That's a tad lower than I said uh, about a week and a half ago before I went away. So just be careful. And the question is, SCO, is that a, a trade? Yeah, as a trade, if you want to buy SCO, I treat it only as a trade. At 18.53, probably I, Friday would obviously have been the best time to get it in the 17s. But yeah, I think it's going to go a little higher. It's going to sort of fill the gap. I'm not sure it'll go over 20 just yet, but I think it'll hit 19.70. Maybe 20.20 .20 doesn't make a new recovery high. A lot has to happen for that to, to be a sustainable run than a real quick move. So yes, if you're in the SEO, hold it. But I would um, add to it as a training position only, and I make it really strict. You buy it right here at 18.53. If by tomorrow it hasn't taken out, let's call it an 18.23 low, 30 cents stop. If it hasn't taken out the high by this time tomorrow, it needs to break above 18.93. The moment it goes to 18.94, this is a continuous, con no, this is the SCO. I would raise this, if you nibbled on it now, I would raise the stop and make a separate stop completely on that trading position. So I hope that helps you. Um, I had a very interesting email here. This is one of those spam emails, but it's an email that I'm interested in. Norwegian startup signs first industrial energy storage contract. In the global race for energy storage technologies, the Oslo-based startup Energy Nest takes the lead in a cooperation with the Italian oil and gas major ENI, e &I, the first thermal energy storage for CO2-free power generation will be built in Sicily, Italy. Energy Nest is headed by Dr. Christian Thiel. Uh, and it goes on to about the, the IPO, uh, about the uh, startup, etc. So that, I think, is, that is, I'm always looking at leapfrogging. Amazon leaps, leapfrogs. It does what Sears and Roebuck did back in the 1920s uh, with its big catalog. It became just the thing to have the huge catalog book. You don't need a catalog book anymore. You've got it online, but it is big, right? Um, you had uh, the Toyota came out and it started the first electric car. And that electric car... Um, did, did wonders. Eventually, that became uh, the lead-in for Tesla. And 
a whole smorgasbord now of, of electric cars. BMW, got Canada, everyone's getting to the electric car business. But I had said back in, um, let me see, I think it must have been back in 2004, a lot of people have said to me, uh, so this is the end of, end of um, the multinationals. I said, why? And they said, um, they said because it'll just be uh, it'll just be there we go. I just wanted to put this in here. It'll just be electric cars. And I said, you know, the infrastructure takes so long. It's like 50 years before the norm becomes whatever. Even even if you look at the um, the power generator, the water powered uh, steam generator, uh, uh, Stanley Steamer. By the time you got to the decision that it would be electric, uh, it would be uh, gas mo uh, motors that were in predominance, it took forever. It took, and even roads, the roads didn't come about for decades. So everything takes, um, it really takes a long time. So when we're looking at uh, it, when we're looking at the idea of something, this whole energy stuff, I have to tell you, it's a next generation. And it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a while. And then even the lead, even the uh, lead automobiles or whatever it is, I think of what did my son start when he was a kid? Uh, Atari. You know, you don't hear about Atari, but Atari was a real, in many ways, and one was a real game changer. Why was it a game changer? Because uh, within the context of within the context of gaming, that whole thing led to the whole development and the broadening of the internet. You had um, the whole idea of moving from, from let's call it cable-based to non-cable. It's the same thing that's going on, uh, gas pumps to electric. So it takes a long time. And sometimes, uh, like the Prius, who knows if the Prius will be around in another 30 years. It might just be passe. It could be some new adaption of whatever technology. And all of a sudden, you're looking at something else, and people forget what the original, I'm talking about mass built automobile, uh, the Prius, it really was a game changer. And evidently, some of those batteries are still you know, doing very well. So, yeah, so that's what I'm looking at. So I'm interested in this global race for energy storage technologies, Oslo-based startup, Energy Nest. We'll follow this over the period of time. Uh, meantime, SCO, as I said, it's just as a trade, I still think that uh, crude oil is going to be chopping around in a range. Certainly, with all the news that's going on, you would have expected that crude oil jumped, but it hasn't. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition's Hour, Dow's down 340. This will be down 22. I'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And one, we're back. So a uh, very interesting. There's an article in the Globe that I just got here. Um, basically says as stocks swing, swing wildly, the future for baby boomers seems less secure. That really is a big issue, because when you think about it, the baby boomers in certain parts of the country, certainly in the Northeast here, who have been the beneficiaries of a real estate boom, unlike anything we've seen, but. If they also had stocks at the same time, they've had an incredible mega bull market as well. So you can understand why you get nervous because you're ready to retire and you got, uh, you're just not sure about where to, to, to keep your money. Uh, you don't, uh, you, whatever you sell right now in terms of housing, you're going to play pretty much equal to get something new um, that's smaller with more taxes, probably, and um, it, it's not a, it, it's more a, uh, an incentive just to cut back and to have things a little different without the expenses, say, of the home, because there's the roof, there's this, there's that. There's all, there are always expenses with the house, which, which no one ever, no bank ever tells you when you're getting your mortgage. Um, at the same time, when you get a, a, a boom, you get capital gains. Even if it takes a long time to get that, it is capital gains. You don't want to just give that up. I mean, this is this is part of your whole retirement package. So I, I'm going to read this article and discuss a little bit more. I have a feeling, though, that it's written by a reporter with a particular bias that wants to be presented, and we'll see if that's the case, because, in fact, there is... There are very few other places that you can put your money, but what? So you put your, your money into uh, uh, great stocks like the United Technologies, and it drops 15, 20 percent? That's a lot of money, right? So Amazon, we're looking at 2050 was the high back in uh, January, I think it was. No, it was in September of last year, and uh, it drops to 1307. Rally is back over 2000 and now it's trading at 1796 of 20 points stuck in this lower range. A rectangle formation can last a lot longer, <clears throat> excuse me, than your patients. Um, so, a couple of questions came in. Yeah, what are the statements? Um, IYT. IYT is a transportation index not confirming anything about the Dow for a long time. 209 was the September high. Uh, this is the ETF, transportation ETF, iShares, drops to 155, trading at 179 right now. Uh, it's looking like it's real tough for the transports. Triple M I spoke about before, and he had said, so GT says, Triple M looking like 208 to 209 breakdown. Yeah, breaking down. This is not good. This is at lower lows. Trough F in the monthly chart goes from 259. 
at the low right now, it's at 158, just off the most recent lows. This is serious stuff. XOM kicked out of the S&P top 10 by waiting. Uh, XOM, this is Exxon Mobil uh, trading. Okay, it's up down 12 cents at 68.37, but near yeah, all-time lows. But it is trying to at least hold. But uh, it's not a great-looking chart. Uh, the RUT index, IYIYIWM. Uh, the RUT, did you talk about the 2000? Yeah, uh, but breaking. Yeah, it's just stuck in this range, also towards the lower range of the latest range, not the December of 125, but at 146. It goes on and on and on, XAL. Let's look at the XAL. XAL at this particular point is trading at, uh, I need to not, I need to still keep my, uh, here we go. XAL also at its lows. Um, it's trading down $1.51 and $91.41. This is the ARCA airline index. Makes a high up in the 124th in 2018. Drops to the 86s, trading right now at 91. It's not, not a great looking chart. So, yes, so to answer the question, I am index wise, I'm more bearish. Stock wise, we're trying to be very specific so far, holding okay. Um, one has done actually quite nicely since we just got in, but I, I'm expecting that's going to be vulnerable to selling. And all these little pops to the upside so far, the meeting was selling. This is different to what we've seen for a long time. Every single sell, every single 25 point down in the S&P was met with a double on the upside in the buying. I think this is going to be a little more difficult. Uh, let's see now. Let's go to a question I had about, yeah, could I just quickly go through the... Um, uh, for my, my fang list. So Facebook trading right now, Facebook FB trading down $1.86 at 183 in the lower range. One at 178 is the 200 period moving average has hit twice. I think it's going to hit it again. Be careful. Apple, Apple trading at uh, 204, down 3.81, stuck in this range. More towards the upper level. 220, 233 was all time high, 142 round number actually was the low, runs all the way back to the 220s, now it's trading at 204, I think it has more sideways to go, 193 is a 200 period moving average, just, it needs time just to digest these gains, Amazon, Amazon, didn't I do Amazon just a moment ago, yes, trading up 20, uh, it, it looks like, also in the upper range, monthly chart still good, it just needs to digest these big gains, I mean, even the 1307 to the 202 level, uh, 2002, I should say. Um, hey, it just needs a little time. Netflix, the one I never understand. So I'll just do it down the lows. This is not looking good at all. Down one and a half at 292. And Goog, old Goog. Uh, Alphabet trading at is the uh, main stock, trading at 1181, makes an all time high. Of, did I not put that in? Did I keep forgetting to do that? Uh, let's see. 1289.27 in April. 1289.87, 1289.87. I said April 42019. Yeah, and trading right now at 1181. Not a big deal. It's in the upper range. So it's holding okay. Um, so I'm just saying. Some of these stocks that have spectacular moves, they just need a bit of a break, a little, a little time now. Semiconductors, lousy action, down $1.82 at 112.16. This to me is a bit of a benchmark. I showed my subscribers over the weekend, my opening call subscribers and said, hey, look at this. And I showed arrows. I said a break into the 118s would be really positive. A break underneath 109 is just not so good because you've broken this. You could get a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. I'm just I'm a little nervous about the semiconductors. I think they need more of a timeout. In fact, I think they need some more testing of the 109 to 105 area, 109 to 107. Um, that's and look at the XLK. XLK is, in fact, um, trading off the highs, all-time highs, all-time high was 82.78 back on the 23rd of July. Look at the monthly. I really have to call this peak B. I think it's going to go to a C and a D, unless it breaks under 70, and it's at 78.69 right now. So this is something to watch. Uh, this is the S&P spider, uh, tech spider fund. Uh, question I had here was, um, oh, where did it just go? Oh, Disney. This, I looked at Disney over the weekend, just seemed to be stuck in a range. I didn't actually note, re-notate it. Um, it's in the lower range of the higher 
and low range of the daily, um, low range of the weekly, but the higher range of the monthly. And this candle says that if it's if Disney starts to close any week below 132, I said 135.52. You can expect lower prices based on the candle that they formed last month in August. It needs 142, and it needs it within 10 days without breaking down. I'll be right back. That was a trap. And tag conditions are down to 30. SP's on 21. A lot of questions are coming in. Um, I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to talk. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I hope Steve's uh, safe and everyone down in the Florida area is going to be safe. What a horrendous situation. Can you, I, we hardly ever get this kind of thing up here in the Northeast, but every time we've had Bob or one of, one of those uh, vicious, vicious tornado-like things, um, the noise it's like it's sitting on the wing of, 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 a, of a jet it's just listening to that roar it doesn't stop it goes on and on to have it for 38 hours or more I can't even imagine with the with hurricane 5 I just I really we feel for the, these people and um, so just let's hope everyone's gonna be safe in that it, it's really far offshore when it comes north if it does come north very soon so um, um, a couple of things here. Um, just let me review. Um, the VIX index is only up one. It's a 20.06. If the VIX starts to get into the 22s anytime this week, you can expect the, the test that I'm anticipating of the um, of the Dow 25,700, uh, 25,500s. 
I am expecting that the low 25,000s will be tested one more time. I'm a little concerned in the sense that this is a Chapman wave. I'll talk more about it. I just want to get back into th things after being a week away. This lowercase h that subscribers know, I always say lowercase h can, can become a lowercase m and then even have the worm pattern that goes to another arch. And if that arch breaks under the left side low, you can get a pretty severe decline, but then you're kind of done because once that's finished, when it goes back into the the rectangle formation, it actually starts a big move to the upside. I don't know if that's the case. I'm going step by step. Yeah, we did go. We've been short since the day of the high, seven points off the high, and we've been adding to it. We just got stopped out of our last down short position on Friday, which was left. I jumped back in. We're still be back to short. I. I think that the downside is what we're looking at. Even if it's testing, it's most important that we that we use up some time and energy here, just like the storm. You need to go sideways, and then we'll see what's left. I'll do a lot more tomorrow. I want to talk about certain patterns that are unfolding. I didn't have time today. I will have time tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget my opening call uh, subscription is right on the front page of TFNN. And you get it for one month free. Just check it out. And we've had some pretty nice calls. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. I hope Steve's coming up next. And then you've got Dave White.